Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Wednesday, November 24th. The opening sentence today is from Habakkuk chapter 2. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. The confession of sin. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed mere ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Jubilate. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates of thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Now we have the Psalm reading and the New Testament reading. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 68, verses 1 through 18. Psalm 68 begins on page 351 in the prayer book. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him also flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so shall you drive them away. And as wax melts before the fire, so let the ungodly perish before the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. O oh, sing unto God and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him who rides upon the heavens. The Lord is his name. Rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless and defends the cause of the widows. God in his holy habitation. He is the God who gives the solitary a home and brings the prisoners out of captivity. But lets the rebellious dwell in a desert land. O oh God, when you went forth before the people, when you went through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens poured forth rain at the presence of God. Even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. You, O God, sent a gracious rain upon your inheritance and refreshed the land when it was weary. Your congregation found a dwelling there. For you, O God of your goodness, have provided for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed the tidings. Kings with their armies fled. They fled. And the women at home divided the spoil. Though you have lain among the sheepfolds, yet shall you be like the wings of a dove that are covered with the silver and whose feathers shine like gold. When the Almighty scattered kings, it was as if it snowed in Zalman. At the hill of Bashan, so is God's hill. Even a high hill as the hill of Bashan. 
Why look with envy, you high hills? This is God's hill on which it pleases him to dwell. Surely the Lord will abide on it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. And the Lord has come from Sinai into the holy place. You have gone up on high. You have led kept, captivity captive and received gifts from men. Even from your enemies, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson today is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning with the 20th chapter, the 17th verse. Paul speaks to the Ephesian elders. Now from my life, Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, you yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I command you to God, commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. They accompanied him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle appointed for today is the Benedictus, found on page 19. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. 
This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. A collect for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, that brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin or run into any danger, and that, guided by your Spirit, we may do what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have a time for prayer. Heavenly Father, there is so much to be thankful for, and we thank you for all of the blessings that you pour out on us daily, and I thank you, Lord, for the missions you let us support. I would especially ask that you would continue to work in Child Evangelism Fellowship as they reorganize and look for a new state director. Heavenly Father, at this time when we give thanks as a nation, it's, it's a wonderful thing to remember that our missions are spreading your gospel throughout the world, throughout the, the areas that need the light, those areas that have darkness so often, especially in the prisons, whether it's adult prisons with Kairos ministry or whether it's Life Quest um, or whether it's even Young Life, um, the youth are our future and those those youth are needed i also pray, pray lord for youth to come to our church to find a church home to know that we love them we spread our arms wide just as jesus did to love us all thank you lord oh heavenly father we 
we come to you again in a spirit of thanksgiving, um, not because that day falls this week, but because we have so much to be thankful for at Christ the King. Uh, and we thank you for all the opportunities you give us for mission and outreach. We thank you for Jean and her work in Denver with the youth. Um, I thank you for the prayers that have been lifted for Cairo's prison ministry, for the work that's being done with youth uh, who are in trouble. And, and if, if they can just reach for you and for relationship with you, may very well not end up in prison. Mm -hmm. Touch the hearts of your people to reach out and reach out and reach out again to those who do not yet have relationship with you or have had relationship and stepped away from it. Those are the things that we've been told in the Bible are, that's our job. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's our job. And uh, keep us aware of that. Keep us aware that it's our job to be generous with all the gifts you've given us, our money, our time, and our talent. And our, it's our job to share the good news. And so quicken our hearts to be about our business. All these things we ask in your name. Father, thank you for missions that you're doing throughout the world. God, thank you for what you're doing in Tanzania. Um, God, thank you for freeing the two missionaries in Haiti. We pray that you would be with the remaining ones that are still there. Um, but God, thank you that even though at times there's persecution, at times there's death and suffering, that your gospel is still alive and, and is working. Um, and so I pray that you just, especially this week, be with those people and thank you for what you're doing, Lord. On page 24, there's a prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. A prayer for the general thanksgiving is found on page 25. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and your redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>